Good morning and welcome to the service this morning. I've always thought of the earlier service as being the frozen chosen service, but this one's now not much better in the middle of June. So it is good to be together, even if it's a little bit chilly. And welcome to those who are joining us from home in the live stream. It is good to have you with us even when you are warm at home and we're a little bit chilly here. Um, this morning, the message from the flowers is a big thank you to all those who contributed donations towards the winter blanket drive. So thank you so much for that. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your faithful love. We thank you that you are with, with us through everything, through every season of life. No matter the troubles that come our way, we have no need to fear because you will protect us, you will journey with us, and you will hold us. We pray that even in the desert, in our times of plenty, that we will remain focused on you, that we will know that you are our provider, you are our saviour and our protector through every season of our lives. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Our first reading for this morning comes from Matthew 24, sorry, Matthew 10, from verse 24 to 39. Jesus says, a student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. <clears throat> so do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a, man, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And our second reading comes from Romans 6, from verse 1 to 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in, live in it any longer? Or well, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. 
death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And we thank God for his word to us this morning. Fear is the most pervasive, the most powerful, motivating emotion in human experience. From the time we are born, we are taught to be afraid. We are taught to fear strangers. We are taught to fear the dangers around us. Throughout history, political leaders have understood the power of fear, using fear to control people, stop people from resisting what they want, what they say must happen. Even when what is happening in society is not in the best interests of the people, fear will be used to keep people in line. In the passage, just before the passage we read this morning, Jesus spoke to his disciples about persevering through persecution and remaining persistent in their faith, no matter what comes to them. And in our reading from Matthew this morning, he says to them, do not be afraid of the persecution that's coming your way. Don't be afraid of anything that might come to you. The Pharisees had called Jesus the prince of the demons. They had said that everything he was doing was evil, that evil spirits were helping him perform miracles. And Jesus warns his disciples that if he has come only for good, and he is only good, and he has been labeled as evil, they should prepare for the same thing. They should be prepared to be questioned, to be labeled as evil, that people will be suspicious of them. When we treat others with kindness, with patience, when we do things just out of love, people will question our motives. They will question why we are doing it, what we're getting out of it. And Jesus prepares his disciples for that. And he says, don't worry about that. Don't be afraid of that. It will come and they will say this about you and it doesn't matter. He says to them, do not be afraid of the pain that might come, of the suffering. The early disciples were very likely going to face physical persecution for affiliating themselves with Christ. They were taken before courts of law and told to denounce Christ. And if they didn't, they were physically tortured, they were imprisoned, they faced execution. All of these things would obviously instill fear in people. The threat of losing our lives would create the deepest fear that we could face. And Jesus says three times to them in this one conversation, do not be afraid. Do not fear the people who are going to persecute you. Do not fear those who might kill the body but cannot kill the soul. And do not be afraid for your life because you are valuable to God. We are so valuable to God that there is nothing that will happen to us that goes unnoticed. A sparrow will not fall without God knowing. And every hair on our head is counted. We are worth more than the sparrows. And so Jesus encourages his disciples then, he encourages us today, that no matter what trials we may may face, whatever the persecution is, And sometimes it may be painful. If the disciples went through physical pain, they were put in prisons, had their freedom taken away, we may find ourselves in places of conflict. We may find people who are very dear to us resisting us because we follow Christ or being a little bit apprehensive to talk to us because we're Christians. Nothing that we face can dislodge Christ from our lives. There is no persecution that can come to us that will remove us from God. And Christ continued to remind his disciples 
that no matter what is coming, they do not need to fear it because God will be with them and he will go with them every step of the way. In today's society, we are living in a democratic society. We are free to be here in a church. We are free to tell people we are Christians. And so we may not face the same kind of persecution as the early disciples did. But it seems that in today's society, there's more resistance to Christ. It may be more subtle, but people seem to not want to hear about anything that sounds like it involves faith, anything that sounds like it involves Jesus. People kind of start backing off from us and going, no, we don't, we don't do that. We don't talk like that. I was reading an article, and it was such a nonsense article about these celebrities. Um, and the one celebrity is quite an outspoken Christian in Hollywood, and he had been divorced and remarried, and it seemed like the fans liked the ex-wife more than they liked his current wife. And the whole way through the article, it was almost trying to judge his faith and saying, oh, because he's a Christian, this, and it had nothing to do with their marriage, but they were trying to blame his faith as the reason why we don't have this picture perfect couple and I thought this is such a strange attitude to have to these people who I don't know, and their fans don't know them. They're so far removed from us. But we decide we like this couple. They look nice together. And then we become resistant to the fact that he follows Christ. He's a Christian and, and now the world wants to judge that. I think that's where our persecution comes in now, where our trials come in. It's more subtle, but people are resistant to Christ now. We try and gloss over it or not acknowledge it. And Jesus had said to his disciples, he has come to bring division, division between family members. And he wasn't encouraging them and he's not encouraging us to go home and destroy our families. Our family is crucially important, but he does warn them that you may find yourself in conflict with others. You, might, you may find yourself in conflict with people who are very important to you. If you have different understandings, if you know Christ and someone else does not, because when we choose to follow Jesus and we choose to commit to him, it's a very clear decision. We can't just gloss over deep differences, deep conflicts, just to have superficial harmony, that we just act like everything's okay. But the encouragement in that is that we also don't need to rush home and start screaming at someone in our house who's not a Christian. We don't have to be aggressive. We have peace with Christ. We know that he is with us through everything. And as a result of that peace, we can deal with these conflicts, we can deal with these differences with love. We don't need to be aggressive towards others. Through our love, through our kindness towards them, we will preach the word of God to them. We will let them know of God's love. We don't necessarily have to use words to do that. We will do it through our actions. The trials that Jesus also spoke about is chasing the things of this world. He had said to his disciples, those who find their lives will lose them and those who lose their lives will find them. If we chase the values of this world and we chase after money, power, status, having lots of titles, we will lose all of those things. Our house and our money and our degrees will not go with us when we die. And so that life will be lost. It will perish. But if we find our lives in Christ, that life will continue. There is nothing that can end that relationship. There is nothing in this world that can take us from God's love. 
and we will enjoy an eternal relationship with Him. That is how if we lose our lives in this world, we give up everything that society tells us is important, we will find our lives. And fear can become so powerful in that fight as well, because we're made to feel afraid that if I don't do something, if I don't get this promotion, if I don't have a certain car or a certain title, then I don't have enough. If I don't make enough money, I'm falling short, I'm losing out on something. And Christ tells us that that is not where we need to look for power. We don't need to listen to the fear that's been pushed on us, telling us we have to go for these things. Because we are living a different life. We are living in a way that may go against what society tells us. It may go against what our families tell us. But we know that it is because of our commitment to Christ that we are going to do things differently. Our fear can become quite a difficult thing to overcome. And Jesus understood that. He said three times to his disciples, do not be afraid. He knows that our emotions are not an on-off switch. That if we commit to him today, we will never be afraid again and we'll just be fine. He knows that it is a daily, consistent action that we have to keep taking our fears back to him and keep going back and saying, Lord, please help me. We may leave one day and think, I will not be afraid. I know God is in control. And the next day we'll wake up and feel afraid again because that is how our emotions work. And we need to consistently take that fear back to God, consistently go back with our anxiety and go to God and say, take control over this situation. And the next one that comes up might scare us again. And again, we say to God, take control over this situation. And through that, we learn to trust in God and we learn to rest assured in his presence. When we <clears throat> deal with small children or we deal with our own children, we know that we'll never do anything to let them down, harm them. And so we want them to trust us and we want them to trust that they can rely on us. Mm -hmm. And God treats us in the same way. We can rely on him. He will always be there. It doesn't necessarily mean that God's going to take all our trials away and all the obstacles are going to disappear. That's not the reality of our world, and it's not the reality of our lives. But he promises us that he will carry us through every step of the way. When we are tested, when we are going through difficulties, as painful as it may be, that is where the value of something is really tested. That's where we really rely on God. Sometimes it can also be difficult to proclaim that it's God in our lives because there's so much resistance to him. And so maybe we are going through a, diffi a difficult time in life and we're praying for strength and we're praying for endurance and God gives us strength. And then someone comes to us and says, I don't know how you do all of this. How are you so strong? And we go, oh, thank you. Because we we're too scared to say, it's because God is carrying me. I'm not doing this alone. And we're afraid of how they might react to us. We're afraid that it might actually cause a conflict we don't want. Or perhaps it's actually our own pride that gets in the way and then we want to take credit for it. We need to, as we prayerfully and consistently take our fears to God, we also need to take our pride. We need to take that fear of proclaiming that it's God, that fear of maybe causing a conflict. Take our pride that makes us want to claim that it's us doing it on our own and it's not actually God carrying us through this. And just as 
Jesus had said, we are so much more valuable than the sparrows. God cares for us so deeply. We are so valuable to him that he doesn't lose patience with us. If we have to keep going back with the same worries, we have to keep going back with the same struggles. He doesn't become impatient and he doesn't think, I've already told you this, why can't you get it right? He is so patient with us, so consistent with us. And through that consistency, we learn, like children, we learn to trust and we learn to let go of those fears. And we learn that there is no fear, there is no persecution that is ever going to get the best of us and that is ever going to take us from God. Jesus had said to his disciples that whatever is covered up will be uncovered and secrets will be made known. That promise is through the mission that the disciples would take. It is through the mission that we will take in our lives. That through our dependence on God, through our vulnerability, through our simplicity, we will declare God's character to the world. Because we remain committed to him, we continue to depend on him, the people around us, the world around us, will see the character of God. They will see the face of God because of the way we live. Because even in times of difficulty, we will have a joy that surpasses understanding. We will have a peace within us when we face any obstacles. And that will reveal Christ's love through us and through our lives and our mission. God knows our hearts, he knows us, and he knows where we are limited. And so whenever Jesus spoke to his disciples, he brought sometimes difficult truths to hear. Truths like, this may cause division. You may turn against family members because you choose me but there's always a reassurance with it as well. The reassurance of, I am going with you. You don't need to be afraid. Whatever is coming, Christ will carry us through. And even if we reject the perceived powers of the world, if we let go of having enough money, having the right status, none of that will really matter because all of those things will stay here. We have found a life that is an eternal life in Christ. And so by prayerfully and consistently taking our fears to God, taking our pride and our anxiety, and being reminded of his love every time we go there, we will find it easier to trust, we will find it easier to let go of the fear and through the way we then live and our mission that God has called us to, we will proclaim the gospel to everyone who we encounter. Let us close our eyes for a prayer. <clears throat> Lord, this morning we bring our fears, we bring our worries to you and we lay them at the foot of the cross. We are reminded of the great everlasting love for you have for us. And we pray that you will remind us of our calling, remind us of the service you want us to carry out for you. Help us to lay down our fears, lay down our worries, pick up our cross and follow you. We pray that even in the times where it gets difficult to do that, you will strengthen us and you will remind us and encourage us that there is nothing in this life that we will ever do alone. In your name, amen.
the Lord.